Welcome back. This is your 12 days of Google Christmas. Well, we are up to number nine of the most Googled search terms for Christmas. And this one, of course, is the big question on a lot of people's minds. What is sin? You know, we live in this culture where the concept of sin has become entangled with this legalistic arguments of right versus wrong. What is it you consider sin? A lot of people want to say, whatever I consider sin is sin, and whatever you consider sin is sin, and never the twain shall meet. They also want to take the Ten Commandments and pick out the ones that are most disturbing to them and call that a big sin and other sins as little sins. You might have heard someone say a white lie. That's what we're talking about. However, the Bible is very clear. The definition of sin is falling short of the mark, specifically falling short of the glory of God. This term is actually a military term. It refers to archery. You're not trying to miss the target, your arrow just falls short. It literally can be seen as a mistake, an attempt at something proper that doesn't quite work out. So sin is mentioned in the Bible hundreds of times, starting with the original sin of Adam and Eve. In fact, Paul puts a very specific point on it down in Romans chapter 3, verse 20. He says this, Therefore no one will be declared righteous in this sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. Here's what Paul means by that. There aren't a list of rules to follow that will keep you from sin. All the list of rules, the entire Old Testament roughly, and a big part of the New Testament, is meant to make us conscious of sin so that we will desire to live differently. This is why a sin like adultery or theft is not bigger than lying or some sort of mistruth or speeding on the freeway. They're all the same. They're all meant to teach us a lesson. You know, the real tragedy of sin is that this distances us from God. And we hear that a little bit laid out for us in Isaiah chapter 59, where he says this, but your inequalities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. You see, these sins put barriers between us and the Father. Not only can He not hear us, does He not listen to our prayers, that means our prayers aren't getting answered as well. Now, the good side of sin is that it is a call to repentance, a chance for us to change, to seek His face again. And this is dealt with over in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. It says this, See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. What earnestness, that eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point you have proved yourself to be innocent in this matter. You see, the upside of sin in the life of the believer brings us on to godly sorrow, a chance for us to seek his face and live differently in the future. Well, Merry Christmas, and I hope this has cleared up any questions you might have in your mind about what the Bible says sin is and how that works in the believer's life. Merry Christmas. I'll see you tomorrow.